UCF students, we're in this series called Be Real. And our aim is to be real about the real topics that you want to know about. And today, we're going to be talking about a real hot topic in our culture that is definitely volatile and a little controversial, and that's justice. And justice has to do with the conduct in relation to others. Just behavior accords with what is morally right and morally fair. And justice is the quality of what doing what is right. Everyone has an opinion on what they believe justice is and how justice should be sought after, especially since it's a subject that can impact things like race, the unborn, animals, climate change, and so much more. And with so many views on what justice is, who deserves it, and how we should give it, it can be difficult to know where to begin to find the right answers. However, as Christians, the first place that we should turn to for direction and wisdom in this conversation is, you guessed it, the Bible. We see how important this is in Paul's letter to the Romans. It says this in Romans 12 too, Do not be conformed to this world, but instead be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. And as Christians, We're supposed to be renewing our minds and not allowing ourselves to be taken captive by the influence of the world. But instead, we should test all things to make sure that they're the will of God. So when it comes to justice in areas like abortion, racism, gender, animal rights, gun laws, all of the above, Christians absolutely must be searching God's word to discover how to best pursue justice. So I want to empower you today to begin to pursue justice by understanding these truths. Number one, God cares about justice. No one cares about justice more than God does. Know how I can say that confidently? Because the Bible is clear that God is a God of justice. And let's just look at Deuteronomy 32.4. The rock, his work, is perfect for all his ways are justice. A God of faithfulness and without iniquity, just and upright is he. God doesn't choose to just act justly occasionally. It's actually impossible for God to be unjust because justice, as we just read in Deuteronomy, is a part of his perfect nature. He is the prime example of justice and the perfect image of a judge. And this means that we can trust him that when we see injustice, he sees it too. In Psalm 89, 14, it says, Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. It's important for us to know that ultimate justice is in God's hands. We do what we can here and now to be the salt and light by following the commands of God, but we recognize that we can't solve all of the world's problems or correct every single instance of injustice. We do what we can while also recognizing that on this side of eternity, we will never see a perfect world. And that's why it's wonderful to know that God does care because nothing will get past him. Nothing is out of his sight or out of his reach. He cares. The second truth is that I should care about justice. God cares about justice and I should care about justice. He cares about justice more than anyone else, so we as Christians should care about it more than anyone else. We should care about injustice and live a just life that decreases injustice. We should trust in Jesus and we love him because of who he is and what he has done. Jesus himself knew that our love for him would result in obedience to him. We're given several commands actually from Jesus as to how we are to treat the poor, the widow, the orphans, and even our neighbor. Jesus replied, the most important commandment is this. Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and only Lord, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all of your strength. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. Loving your neighbor as yourself is one of the most important commandments in all of scripture. Justice is not just about posting some cool trendy Instagram posts that makes us feel like we accomplished something, but justice is actually an active approach. It's actively living in your life in obedience to Christ and loving your neighbor as though they were you. 
and there may be a few things that you feel strongly compelled to stand up for, but don't feel the unnecessary pressure of having to raise your voice about every single issue. It's okay if you don't post that thing on Instagram, and it's okay if you do. Here is what I would encourage you to do. Even though you don't have to do something about everything, you can still pray about all of these things. Scripture says in Ephesians, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. When we pray, we're getting connected to a source that is powerful because we are praying to God, who we already established cares about the injustices in the world. In some situations, are simply out of our reach. And in those moments, we go to God and we ask Him for help. And we trust that He cares and that He isn't turning a blind eye. The third truth is we can stand for justice. Students, as Christ followers, we often believe that we're alone. Can I remind each of you that you're not alone when you stand up for justice? Scripture actually says this, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. Christians have always cared about justice, and we will continue to stand for it. And I know that we all have a desire to see justice in our world today, but as Christians, what do we do to stand for it here and now? First, we stand for the gospel. And what is the gospel? The gospel is the good news of Jesus. We can never hope to see actual justice until hearts are changed by God. This is the priority number one. Second is we can stand for love. We start with our family, our friends, our community, and we work our way outward. Remember that justice is the quality of doing what's right. So are you doing what's right in your family, in your friend group, in your community? Because justice begins as an individual choice, and it's not always as a societal shift. Our love for our neighbor will be the determining factor of the justice that we hope to see. And the third thing is this, that we can stand for truth. God calls us to not live by lies, but to be sober-minded, to be wise. And we also reject lies and the false teachings in culture, because if it doesn't align with God's word, then it isn't the truth. And if we stand in those three ways, we will certainly begin to see justice become more of the norm in our families, in our communities, and beyond. And ultimately, the topic of justice reaches its climax in the person and work of Jesus Christ. God himself stepped out of heaven and into the world so that he could pay for the sins of his people. Justice would be every sinner receiving their wages, death and eternity and hell, but Jesus. But Jesus paid our debt. Grace and forgiveness were bought with a price so that it could be freely given to you and to me. And because of this, we pursue grace, forgiveness, love and truth in our world today and we spread the kingdom of god so more people can know of the justice of our god so the bottom line for tonight is this justice matters to god so it matters to me